you. Thank you. All right. All right. Good afternoon and welcome to our annual meeting at Center for New Americans. And thank you for joining us. I'm Lori Millman. If you don't know by now, I'm the director and I'm so happy to be here. I would like you to give that round of applause to the students who prepared the wonderful food you are eating. Let, 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 let me introduce them, please. Hasina and Walid Zahed. If you'd raise your hands, Hasina and Walid. And, and Soralis Moreno, who prepared dessert. I want to say that all of these students are Serve Safe certified. Soralis got her certification in our program. So. Um, the other thing I would like to say, and we're going to introduce some very important people. If you are one of our students or alumni, would you please stand? Because without you, we don't have a program. Our students and alumni, would you please stand? Ronaldo, Peter, France, I mean. Raquel, Raquel, you are an alum. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to introduce the chair of our board, Jay Vaughn. We're going to have a board meeting, and then we will return to our regularly scheduled program. I promise to be brief, uh, but we do have some orders of business. Uh, the first order of business is to approve the minutes of the last meeting. So moved. So moved. All in favor? Seconded? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I would also like to introduce, I should introduce the board as well. Uh, we have Alexandra Parieva, Shardul Parmar, and Roger Webb. Do I still always? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the second order of, of business is the uh, voting of Board officers, thank you. <laughs> um, for uh, treasurer, there was a nomination for Shardul Parmar. All in favor? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you why Roger's especially in favor in a minute. <laughs> um, and as uh, board chair, uh, my name was on the ballot. Uh, there have been in absentia um, votes cast already. Uh, so, for myself, Jay Vaughn, to be board chair. Mm -hmm. All in favor, so moved. <laughs> Thank you. And that takes care of our business. Uh, the last order being, uh, we would like to thank Roger Webb for his service with CNA. He has been with us since before COVID, so we can't really remember how long that's been. <laughs> we varies from five to seven years, given who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> so, Roger, we have this to present to you. have a uh, presentation um, to share with you about our work. 
But we also have some very important people we want to recognize. And so we're turning the presentation a little on its head and starting with the people we want to recognize. Uh, would you join me in acknowledging Sarah Sullivan, who has been our 30 Poems event chair for five years. This is her sixth year. She has graciously agreed to chair this event again. Sarah, would you come up and just say a few words about what we do? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Do you want me to just talk loud? OK. He said turn the mic on. This one turns off. See, now I have more power, right? Um, don't you guys feel like such grown-ups? Like, look. Look at this room, and the, there's wood with carvings, and we're sitting at tables with tablecloths and pumpkins in the middle. Um, that's why I'm here. <laughs> the food was amazing. So I am Sarah, um, and um, I was introduced to Center for New Americans because I had joined a, poet, a writing group for the first time in my life, and Nerissa Neal's encouraged her writers to do it. And so I was like, I don't know what CNA is, but it sounds like a good thing to uh, write a poem a day. <laughs> and, and I'm like, and I'm a bad fundraiser. So I set my goal at like $200 for the month. Um, and I, I don't know, I raised a couple thousand or something because I started sending my poems out to people every day, which you don't have to do. But it, it, was, it was good to, um, it was a way for lots of people in my friend and family group to get to know me and get to know Center for New Americans. And um, I just loved it. it it's just, um, under Lori's leadership, there's, there's so much growth and support for the, and care for the community and the participants. And so many different things offered that most people don't know even in the community. Um, so it's just such an honor to be part of this literary fundraiser um, when we're really supporting learning English and being able to do these programs. So uh, anyone who doesn't know what 30 Poems is in November, by the way, people sign up as if it's a marathon or a 5K or you know, one mile walk, but <laughs> you get a, a pledge basically for doing it, or 50 cents a poem. I have poem, there's been inflation, poems are worth a lot more these days. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you're sharing the word about Center for New Americans and raising money, and, um, and you just have to write 30 poems in November. They don't have to be one a day. You don't have to share any. I share all of mine. Someday I'll be too old for that. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's a real great community event. And our, so many leaders of poet, in our poetry community and writing community are here. And Lori's like, you're done talking, Sarah. That's enough. <laughs> well, let's just say, if you are a current or past writer for 30 poems in November, would you stand up, please? Yeah. So this, these people are part of a group that raised, are you ready, $75,000 last year for this program. So this is, this is no joke. 30 poems in November, it's no joke. So, and there is a reading, Marty Wall, our, our best supporter, Marty Wall, wants you all to show up for the reading back here at Smith College in the Poetry Center. Get out your phones, Wednesday, December 13th. Best reading you'll ever go to with great food afterwards. So we'll see you there, we'll remind you, don't worry. And if I don't remind you, Marty, you'll remind me. Um, one of the most amazing things that has come out of 30 Poems in November is this beautiful book. So I need Jane Yolen to come up here 
so we can recognize her. And Raquel, I would like you to join us. So Jane Yolen, I need my glasses for this, sorry, is a Smith College alumna, 1960, winner of the Smith Medal as well as an honorary doctorate who taught children's literature at Smith for seven years. A local author and activist, Jane has written and published more than 400 children's books. She has a long history of activism for progressive causes and has joined youth activists locally for the March for Our Lives, the Women's March, the Sunrise Movement, and other vital causes. Jane has been a longtime writer and raiser for 30 Poems in November, Center for New Americans' flagship fundraiser to raise awareness of and support for our free classes. She has been raising more than $2,000 a year for more years than I can count. She has written poems about the immigrant and refugee experience, and her most recent book, Straw Bag, Tin Box, Cloth Suitcase, Three Immigrant Voices, includes the journey of Raquel Elizabeth Artiga de Paz, who Jane refers to as her co-author in the book. She is one of Center for New Americans' former students. Please join me in, please stand for Jane. So we just have a, a little something for you and Jane, if you would like to say something, we would love to hear you and we just want to thank you. alone, but you're not really writing it alone. And in this instance, I wrote this book with Rochelle and with my friend Marjorie Lofty, who came over from Iran many years ago when she was running away, as we all found we were running away and running to. And who knew that we were going to be running to a book so many years later. But my writing and finding this group was started because a friend of mine, Leslie Newman, became the, um, the poet laureate of Northampton. And one of the first things she did was to try and set up this 50 poems a day, which is going how many years now? 15? Yeah. So if we have someone to thank for this, it's Leslie. I want to talk, though, a minute about this book, because this book brought this wonderful spirit to me. And it happened this way. I had an idea to write a book about my people coming from the Ukraine, running away from the, the czar's fists, as they were called the Cossacks, who were terrorizing the towns. And this, we thought, was an, a once-off. This is only happens here. But it happened, it turns out, in many places around the world. When my friend Marjorie's family ran from, from Iran, when, when Rochelle's family came over from South America, but we, are, we were running, but we were running the same pace the, to the same place. And just to, to, to write that down was to find out that other people shared your journey. When my, my Yolen cousins, we once a year, uh, or once every couple of years get together, we're about 72 cousins at this point. Um, I'm now, I think, the official oldest one in the family. 
which makes me a little nervous. Um, the first thing that I say when I get up, they ask me to speak for the family, I say, if you ever forget, if you ever forget that you came here, that you ran here, that we are immigrants, then you are not being loyal to your family, to your loved ones, to the people who helped you get here. And that's what you all are doing every day, every day. And for me, the honor is not coming towards me. It is going towards all of you, and I thank you for everything that you do, everything. Rachel and I would like to, to um, sign any books that you buy, and I hope that this money goes back to the organization. <laughs> if not, well, we'll have to do something about that. <laughs> Thank you. Did you want to say anything? Uh, I try. Just quick. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Um, uh, my English is not really good, but I try to say the much better I can. Okay, uh, I want to say thank you uh, first, uh, Center for New Americans, but um, I am a student for, the, for over there, and I'm so happy that Center for New Americans, all Larry, and all teachers help me a lot. I started studying Center for New Americans, I was, uh, when I came here in 2016, and when I come here, I don't speak too much English, nothing, nothing, nothing. And now I try, and I try to learn in every day. But um, it's hard, English is so hard, but it's beautiful. Uh, when I live over there and I come here, I never think USA give me a lot of and beautiful opportunities. I study over there for nurse, but don't finish yet my, my studies. And in here, Lowry and Center for New America helped me a lot. And now I, am a, I take a, um, a PCA first, and now I study CNA. And now I'm working in CNA, and I'm working in home care now. I love my job. And I'm so happy, but it's my big dreams. <laughs> and I want to continue study in more English and more CNA. And you know, another point <laughs> important. When I was going here, I never think I get a this beautiful opportunity to uh, write some, some part of my story in one book. And this country gives beautiful opportunities. And I'm so happy. Jean, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and love you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> And now um, I would love to invite Mohanid, our technology associate, to start a presentation about um, this program that everyone's talked about supporting and that you all are here to support or have supported and are part of. Um, so Mohanid, um, if you would share some of the information and then we'll call up other people to join you. Okay. Hi everyone. Uh, I would like to start my presentation to talk about the locations that we have. We are four locations right now in Northampton, Amherst, Greenfield, and a new one in Springfield. Uh, the second slide, I would like to talk about the staff that we have. We have 36 staff. I remember staff right now. All of the stuff that you can read right now 
is working to support the students, to help them, to encourage them. So we have different kinds of the staff. Uh, start with Lori as a director. Oh. So we You can see that. Okay. Uh, right now we have 149 county students. They joined for the different sites, and we have with the four sites we have the online classes in Greenfield, Northampton, and the number of them. And instead of uh, about 149. Current students, we have about more than 45 uh, students are in the wait list. We're working with the joint to the different kind of the, the classes. This slide just show you how many have classes for each site. In MLS, three classes. This is for just this semester. Greenfield for the classes. Northampton, three classes. And the new site in Springfield, we have two classes. And the last one, the online. The online is work in the evening. The classes in the evening, we have five classes. So right now we have about 17 classes for the semester and uh, divided to 15, uh, 12 classes, they join for the two days online and two days in person. And you can see the, the name of the classes that we have. And also we have five classes uh, joined by the online. Okay, I would like just to show you how many students have for each continent. We have 66 students from the uh, America, 49 students from Asia, 17 from Europe, and 17 from Africa. The same number we have about 30 countries. 30 student, uh, we have students from 30 uh, countries. And just, I can't read that, just you can show how many students for each country. Uh, we have 157 loan for uh, devices for the defense uh, for the students. We have about uh, 129 uh, iPad loan and uh, have about 20, 28 uh, hotspot. All of this work with the students who are not have the internet and that will, that's helping them to join to the class. Also, we are part of the affordable connectivity program, and that is, will help the students to get the free internet. And that's, you can see the number that we work with during this year.
And the, uh, this ACP is a free internet program to support the students. And uh, if you can, uh, Alex, come to. Thank you, Mohanan. So, so now Alex Kazem, our immigration attorney, will take over with the immigration legal. Overview. Greetings, friends. Uh, as Lori just mentioned, my name is Alex Kazem. I am the staff immigration attorney at Center for New Americans. Uh, I'm here to speak with you briefly uh, about the efforts uh, we've engaged in in the last year uh, for our, our citizenship and immigration program. Uh, but before that, I would like to give a quick shout out to our citizenship and immigration program team that has made all of our efforts over the last year possible. Uh, first, I would like to mention Jasmine Lebe and Karen Toll, who are not here with us today. They are our administrative associates and our front office. If we could just give them a round of applause and absentia, please. And then, uh, our paralegals, we have Stephanie Martinez, who is our senior paralegal, and Harleen Multani, who is our citizenship and immigration paralegal. So our citizenship and immigration program is separated into two tracks. Uh, one track is our citizenship applications, people seeking naturalization in the United States. And the other track is our immigration applications. Uh, first, I'd like to talk about our citizenship efforts in the last year. So, uh, our, as, as the numbers show, uh, we, over the last year, have filed 74 uh, citizenship applications. Uh, of those, uh, over the last year, we've gotten 60 uh, application, citizenship application approvals. Uh, there's a, those are 60 new citizens. As you can see, we have a very high passage rate. Uh, the, the remaining uh, number of the 74 are still pending or, or in process. Um, as you can see, we have a very high passage rate for our citizenship program. That is really a testament to our volunteer core uh, of tutors who assist our naturalization applicants in preparation uh, for their citizenship interview and the civics test uh, at that interview. And uh, Stephanie Pasternak will be up to speak uh, about our volunteers uh, momentarily. The other track of cases are our immigration cases. Now our immigration cases are both humanitarian projects which we've engaged in in the last year and as well as our normal immigration work. Uh, over the last year we've taken on a number of uh, humanitarian projects. Uh, first uh, with Afghan resettlement, also with Ukrainians, uh, who have uh, fled war and are entering the United States, and now more recently with Haitians, uh, who have also uh, now immigrate, are, are seeking immigration in the United States. Our, our uh, humanitarian projects are done in, in cooperation with other uh, nonprofit organizations in the area. Uh, up on the board here, on this slide, first we have our asylum numbers uh, over the last year. And this, the asylum numbers are specifically reflective of our Afghan resettlement uh, project. Uh, over the last year, we have filed 37, sorry, 44 uh, asylum applications. Uh, I am very proud to announce of the 44 asylum applications, we have seven grants of asylum so far. We're still waiting to hear from the government on all the rest of them. Uh, also on the board, we have our numbers for TPS applications that we have filed in the last year. Uh, 
I'm sorry? What is TPS? TPS is temporary protected status. So it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a temporary status afforded to uh, particular countries where uh, there might be danger, uh, either politically or, or um, due to natural disaster. Uh, it's a temporary status that needs to be renewed, but, but it allows someone uh, from those countries to stay in the United States and possibly seek a more permanent status in the future. Our TPS numbers, uh, the 94 cases that we uh, have filed over the last year, are reflective of all three of our humanitarian projects, both the Afghans, Ukrainians, and Haitians that we have filed so far. Uh, we still have a lot of work. Uh, we still have many more TPS applications to file for Ukrainians and Haitians, so we're deep uh, in those humanitarian projects. Uh, but these are our numbers so far, and of the 94 that we have filed over the last year, so far we have 25 TPS approvals. The final couple numbers I would like to share are mainly reflective of our normal immigration work. As you can see, on top of all the other stuff that we have filed, that I've mentioned so far that we have filed over the last year, we have filed 42 green card applications and also uh, 61 employment authorization applications. As you can see, we have been very busy.